So this week, all five of my videos are gonna be on designing a single app. And the app idea that I have is called Average Timer. So this is an app that would let you time how long it took you to do something like commute to work or walk the dog. And you start the timer, do the thing, and then you stop the timer, and it will show you on average how long it took you to do that thing. So you can have a whole list of different activities, the average time it took you to do them, and you can start a new timer, record multiple sessions, and see what the average is. So that's my idea. I'm gonna start by sketching it. That's what this video is. I'm sketching out the UI, which I think is really the best way to start any UI design project is sketching because it's fast and loose and you can make mistakes and change things. So you'll see my process here. And then the remaining videos this week, I'll be taking it onto my computer and turning it into a high fidelity prototype by Friday. At least that's my goal. So check it out, enjoy this video, and be sure to catch the other ones through the remainder of this week. Okay, let's start sketching this UI. I'm using my favorite drawing app, Linea, but you can totally do this on paper. It's probably even better. It's just easier for me to record it here. And I have these little rectangle iPhone sized templates, but you don't even need that either. Just draw a quick rectangle. And just be really rough with your sketches. So I'm gonna start with the first screen and I'm just thinking, you know, this is the home screen. So I'll put a name there. What's gonna be the most important action on this screen? Well, this is the average timer app, so I need a way to start a timer. So I'll just put start timer, and I'm gonna put that in a big button shape. And when I tap that button, it's gonna take me to another screen that's the timer screen. And the timer screen needs to show uh, the timer readout, so it's gonna have like some numbers here and a way to stop the timer when you're all done. So I'll put like a little stop button and let's see, if I go back to the home screen, what else do I need there? I guess I'll need a list of the timers that I've already created. So I'll have just a list like this. I'm just going to be really rough and just put um, squiggles instead of actual titles. Like this would be, you know, walk the dog, made dinner, commuted, whatever things you're timing. And when you tap on one of those, you're going to go to a detail screen. So I'm just going to draw an arrow down below here. And let's say, you know, I'll put in a name for one of these. I'll say dinner. This is like average time to cook dinner. So this is the dinner detail screen. And that'll display the average time it took to do that so far. And I think that'll have a graph. So I'll have like a graph of all the recordings that I've made. There might be some other details down below. I'll think about that. And then I think I should have a way to start the timer to start a new um dinner timer recording or whatever one you're looking at here. So I'll have another start timer button. So that could also go to the start timer screen, that same screen. Now I might, you know, you might be tempted to think about things like on the home screen, like, oh, I need a title bar and I need a settings button, you know, maybe like one of those gears. But why do you really need those things? Are those essential parts of the app? Are they essential functions? I don't even know what settings I might have at this point, so I don't really need that. And the title bar, you know, it's a standard iOS navigation thing to have a title bar, but that's not a core part of the app at this point. You know, I'll figure that out later, whether I'm gonna use a title bar or some more custom UI. And you might notice that this button, it's like a big, huge circle in the middle of the screen, and that looks kind of weird. The point is that I know that I'm gonna need a big start timer button, but I don't know exactly where it's gonna be or how it's gonna look. You know, maybe I want it to be at the bottom of the screen or inside of a title bar. But right now I'm just kind of trying to focus more on the functionality. So let's look at the timer screen. I've got the stop button here. The one thing I'm thinking is that I need a way to name the timer. So if I create a brand new timer, at some point I need to give it a name. And I might just you know, erase all of this and say that when you first tap start timer, it prompts you to input a name, something like this, a text field, and then there'll be a button that you tap when you've entered in the name, and then that would take you to the timer screen. But now that I'm looking at it, I've got these three screens, you know, the sequence of home, name, and timer. And when I hit start timer, I'm going to be taken to that name screen. So the timer doesn't actually start when I press start timer. Instead, I have to sit there and type in a name. And maybe I wanted to get that recording going right away. So maybe I can find a way to go directly to the timer screen and enter in the name later. 
So let's let's reconfigure this again. I'm going to start erasing that stuff. So I want to go directly from home to timer. And so there's my timer readout stop button. You know, it could be that when you hit the stop button, then it asks you for a name. But you know, if, if I have free time while the timer is running, maybe I want to enter in the name as it's going. So maybe at the bottom I could put in something like this that lets you choose the name. Um, so you can enter that in whenever you want. Now, if you don't enter in a name and you try and stop the timer, what happens? So maybe then it forces you to enter in the name because you haven't entered it in. We've given you the flexibility to not enter it in, but at that point, you really need to put something. So maybe then it slides up. This box becomes like a drawer kind of panel thing that would slide up. And so then it would cover the screen. You know, the exact interaction there, I can figure out later. Maybe it's a something that just pops up, doesn't necessarily need to slide up, but the important thing is that it covers over the screen so that you're forced to interact with this before you can continue on because we really need you to enter in a name so that we know what this timer is or so that the app has a record of what this timer is. So now you're being asked for a name, you can type that in and then hit a button to continue. When you hit that button, you'll probably go back to the home screen. And if you come to the, one of these detail screens and you hit the start timer button, it can be pre-filled with um, the timer that you came in from. And maybe in that case, it's not pre-filled into a text field, but it's kind of just like, you know, maybe I should, maybe I should draw a different version, a different state of the timer screen over here. So this is a timer, but this is one where I came in directly from the detail screen. And so it knows that it's for dinner and it doesn't need to have a text field here. But maybe there's like an edit button. I could potentially have that so that I could change this to something else if I wanted. And that makes me think also that over here, you know, the top could be a text field, but then I could also have a list of all my existing timers so that, you know, if I did come in and I hit the start timer button, I went to the timer screen, then I hit stop, I could choose one of the existing timers if, if I was recording how long it took me to make dinner, but I didn't want to choose it from the list because I just wanted to immediately get the timer going. Then by the time I stop the timer, I can choose it from the list at that point. Or I could type in a name if it's a brand new one. Now, uh, one other thought that I have as I look over this is this stop button. So when I press the stop button, it would go to this um, name screen. But if you accidentally hit that, the timer's over and there's nothing you can do about it. So maybe it's good to have a second step and also a way to pause the timer. So instead of a stop button, I'm thinking we could have a pause button here. And then when you press the pause button, the stop button appears. And then you need a way to resume as well. So I'll have like a play button that resumes the timer and a stop button that finally stops it and takes you over here. And this would be like some kind of an animation. Maybe the pause button disappears, the play button and the stop button then animate in, they appear. And the timer screen and the screen below it, these are the same screen. I'm just showing two different states because this one has the name kind of like baked into it. Now I'm just looking over everything. You know, this name screen is also kind of a, a different state of the timer screen, depending on how I think about it. It could be that you just go to a new screen that is the name screen, or it could be that the name field um, appears over the timer screen. So I think this is a pretty good starting place. I've been able to think through the overall structure of my app and I can see it all at once here. And because I'm sketching, it's really easy to quickly change something, quickly cross something out. And that's the value of starting on paper with a sketch. There's no way you can work this fast and loose on your computer, and you'll be tempted to start getting into the higher fidelity visuals before you really should, and that's gonna slow you down before you've thought through your app completely. But I'm feeling pretty good with this, so my next step is gonna to be to bring it onto my computer and start making higher fidelity versions of some of these individual screens and then ultimately turn it into a prototype.